Hey guys, I'm Chris from the Tabletop Wargamers. This is part four of the D-Day board build. So guys, I thought I'd give you an update on what I've been doing with the board and the forces. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the work I've done on the board, the extra bits, and I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of the forces and showing you the models that are assembled and such so far. Okay, so as you can see the board, I've sanded the main beach areas. I've started to do some boards and decking and stuff on the on the anti-tank ditches and the trenches on the beach section. I've also cut a layer down on the the end of the beach section for the for the water, and I filled it a bit ready, so it's ready now for painting and for the glue to go on to do the water effect. Um, I'm going to be trying out a product called Mod Podge. Um, I'll also be doing some test pieces for it and I'll be making some videos on the test pieces to show you guys. Show you all the, the different ways I'll try I'll be trying to do it and different effects I'll be get, trying to go for. Um and how I, how my my attempts have turned out basically so that you guys can have a sort of a bit of a tutorial on that I suppose as well. Maybe it'll help some of you guys out with some of your own projects if you got water involved. Because I know it's kind of a tricky piece to do, but it makes or breaks a board really, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, stay tuned for those. So, guys, I'll take it in a bit closer now. We'll have a look what I've done. So, I've, uh, you can see I've sort of, oh, let me get down here. I've cut a layer down, just a, just a small layer down, probably about that high, say a centimetre, maybe less, half a centimetre, off the end of the board. It's a bit scrappy at the moment, but, you know, that's life. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've filled the, as many of the cracks and bits as I can. I'm going to paint it sort of darker colour, going into a lighter colour towards the beach. I guess sort of black, dark blues, greens, and then up to a white towards the e edge. And then I'll be using Mod Podge then to create the water effect. I've seen a few tutorials online and I'll be having a go at doing it myself. Bam. Hopefully it'll turn out and look amazing, but hey. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be amazing. <laughs> so you can see I've sanded the sanded the beach. I just gotta to touch up a few areas, you know, it's some brown paint. Um just to get it to hide back in and blend back in. Here's the first of the tank ditches. So what I've done, I've used match sticks for the little upright sticks, and I've used lollipop sticks cut uh cut so they're off like See, there's the the join is in the middle there, on here, and the join is in the end here. So it's sort of offset with each other. So the rows are offset. So it creates a sort of boarded feel. Then I think it looks really cool. I've also done the the flooring with wood sticks in this as well, and in the trench at the back and the boarding all the way around in the back as well. Got the little side end piece there, as well as all the, all the way across and all the floor. So you can see how cool it looks now. So I got to paint those bits next. Um, so I'll be painting these brown and then sort of, uh, you know, uh, ink washing them, I guess, or shadowing them and and whatnot. Yeah, it looks really cool. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I just got to do some, brush some of the extra excess sand out and stuff now from there, now that it's dry, and I give it a good painting. And um, we'll see. I'll show you how that turns out in the next video. I've also uh, assembled the first little bit of the bunker. I don't know if you guys saw the bunker in the last one. I had the, I assembled the base of it, so it's a, it's a little solid piece now. I'm going to cut another window in the sides, each side like this, and then I'm going to build a little top. Uh, what I've been thinking for the top is probably two layers this thick with a hole inside the inside one, just so it gives a bit of extra height for the guys' heads. And then I'll have it sort of lifts off and I'll have it overlapping the edges a little bit, so uh, and I'll probably sand it so it's bevel, you know, so it's uh, rounded on the edges and that. And then I'll build a little wall out at the back and around a little one there I don't, I 
maybe a doorway there perhaps and a wall around like this just for a bit of extra protection for the troops as they come in out of the bunker um, then obviously we're going to have some barbed wire sections throughout the middle of here I'm going to have to work on some barbed wire now when I get that down I'll show you that as well guys and I'm going to make some hedgehogs and an anti-tank sort of traps and things to go all on the beach you know all the anti-boat anti-tank traps they built on the Omaha so they'll all be littered down the beach area on the water and on the sand and I'll have all the barbed wire running down you know around the pillbox area up there and around these sort of anti-tank traps and around the bunker and stuff to slow the troops advancing up the beach basically so guys I'll show you the, the cliffs next I finished off the bottom of the cliffs as you can see all the way along I've done a I'm pretty pleased with the way it's turned out. Again, I chipped it away with the chisel and I just sort of done a random sort of hacking at it to give it a sort of this nice textured rough sort of look. I also finished the rest of the ramp and I think it turned out pretty cool now. As you can see, it comes in pretty nice. It's, it's pretty flat as well, so I think the guys will be able to stand on it, you know, without too much trouble, without too much sliding down the ramp. And too much falling over there you go it's nice and uh, nice and flat there get some cool texturing in there do you see what I mean the way it sort of it looks quite rocky and rough there we go there. all the way around I try to leave some bits sticking out you know where maybe rocks from above have crumbled and fallen down and created these little piles of rubble and such on the floor you can see it's Looking pretty good there now. This is a shot of the pillbox. I built the little corner supports to hold up the roof. I'll be putting a little flat roof on that, um, and then maybe you know chipping it and putting some bullet scar marks on it and such. I also finished all the top trench works. So I can't remember if I showed you all this in the last video, but all of it is now done. That's the command bunker at the back there. Trench works where the, the mortar team is going to be housed over here where the, the howitzer is going to be and some more areas. This is going to be a pillbox. I'm not sure if I'm going to put a pillbox there yet or not. There's probably going to be one there and the bunkers over there. So, yeah, all in all, I'm very pleased with it so far. It's coming along, it's getting there slowly. Um, not getting quite so much time as I wish I had, but we'll see. I'll continue on. <laughs> so what I've done, guys, I've, you can see I've laid out a lot of troops on the board. These are my initial thoughts on the forces for the, for the game. They are mostly sort of regulars for the Americans, with a little bit of veterancy in the middle at the front to lead, uh, lead the charge, some rangers. Like a lot of sort of regular infantry uh, it went for two squads of uh, rangers I got this one squad here looking pretty cool quite pleased with them <laughs> I haven't assembled the second squad of rangers yet so you'll have to imagine them in here somewhere um, looking great um, yeah <laughs> I'll run you through the list I've made up for, for the Americans now quick um, Let's focus this in right so like I said it's mostly going to be regulars with a little bit of uh, veterans thrown in just to give them a sort of hammer to smash the enemy with so it's going to be regular first lieutenant with an assistant um, two squads of regular infantry they're going to be an NCO with a sub one guy with a bar eight with the rifles exactly the same all the regular squads there's gonna be four squads of regulars we got an air force observer there's the other two regular squads then we got the two ranger squads these are the veterans that are gonna hopefully lead the charge and break the forces on the beach you know to so allow the regulars to follow up behind them and the, hopefully the veterans will soak up most of the fire and attract it and they'll be tough enough to survive and then the regulars can come up behind them fairly unscarred and make an assault up the beach. So the the ranger squads are NCO, the sub, 
go to the bar, four rifles, and two more subs. Then I've got a flamethrower team. I've actually put this down as regular here, but I've decided to change it to veteran, uh, make it a ranger flamethrower team, just to make it last a bit more, because um, everything's going to target that flamethrower. <laughs> I don't want it to just explode without firing a shot, basically. So I want to give it a bit more chance to get up the beach. Because there's not going to be much cover for the Americans. Um, and there's going to be a lot of obstacles slowing them down. So I've gone next for the Sherman. Because I know they landed a lot of Shermans. And a lot of them sunk. Um, so again, the regular Sherman. Give them the extra HMG on the roof. Just for the extra bit of anti-infantry firepower. And just something to you know put a few more pins on the Germans. Hopefully allow the... Now the guys to move up uh, a bit less harassment for the troops there and you can also use it as a bit of mobile cover so then we're gonna have a in three half track I've gone for an inx half track just to try and um, maybe get a squad of regulars in it and charge in up the beach a little bit try and get them up close to one of the maybe the maybe they can you know, charge up the beach here and try and get at this this trench position and assault them perhaps fairly early on. I don't know. We'll see how it pans out. It might just come on and explode <laughs> fairly close to the edge of the water. And then all the men will have to get out of walk with the rest of the others. But uh, we'll see. We will see. Then I've gone for two mechanized landing craft because basically I'm going to need them. One for the tank and one for the... The, tra the jeep, the transport, and for the half track rather, and that's going to carry a little bit of the men as well. And then the I've got another, I've gone for another personnel landing craft, which will carry the rest of the men and the rest of the infantry. So as you can see, there's a there's quite a bit of water area, and the transports are going to move about six inches. So. They'll probably be deploying most of the troops in the shallow water. So it means turn one is going to be transports coming in and then troops wading through water to get to the beach. You know, that's going to be a pretty rough turn one because when you're in the water you can't shoot. So the men are going to be spending a turn not doing anything whilst the Germans up there are going to be hammering, hammering, hammering shots down at them. So turn one for the Americans is going to be really rough, but if they survive it, and I suspect a lot of them will because there's a lot of troops, there's a lot of force to spread the pins out across, turn two is going to really change around. So for the Germans then on the flip side, I have decided to mainly go for an inexperienced force as most of the troops on the beaches at Normandy were uh, fairly inexperienced for the Germans. They had some, you know, uh, some good quality troops as well, which is why I have gone for some regular elements just to sort of back up the inexperienced elements and hopefully give them something to some troops that are capable of holding on and staying in the fight a bit longer because. Um, I was a bit worried that the inexperienced troops might die or rout, you know, run away fairly too quickly. Especially the Ostrupen. Um, so what I've gone for is the first lieutenant. He's regular. He's got two assistants. Just to give him a bit more firepower and a bit more uh, meat shield for him. Then we've got two squads of Ostrupen. These guys are absolutely shite. But, yeah. They're nice and sort of um, historical, as they were sort of. They did have a lot of troops like this on the beaches, and um, because they thought they would never be attacked. So I try to keep this fairly accurate. So I went for two squads of us troops, and they got an NCO the sub, nine guys with rifles. So they're shirkers, so they count pins as double, which is gonna really hurt them, and they're inexperienced, so they're gonna fall to pieces. Um, yeah, those guys are just gonna explode and run away. I got a medic to hopefully keep some of the inexperienced guys alive. I got an artillery observer with two extra guys. So he's gonna chuck some uh, artillery down on the beach on them and then hopefully him and the two assistants will put some shots in 
they're going to be rifles I'm not going to go with like uh, assault rifles or anything too cheese okay guys and the same with these guys up here they're going to be riflemen and he's going to have um, an SMG I think then they got two squads of Craig's Marine the NCO's got a sub they got a light machine gun in the squad so let me focus on it we got seven rifles and an extra SMG both squads are the same so there's going to be two squads of them up there on the top of the cliffs and they are going to hopefully enable them to hold the hold the beach a bit longer um, after the Ostrupin have, ex have all uh, exploded apart and run away then I've got the Hias Grenadier squad these guys are regular these are my regular backbone of the army now these are going to have an NCO with a sub, light machine gun and eight riflemen so it's one ten man squad of regular German grenadiers. Hopefully these guys will give a bit more resistance than the rest of the army and help out a lot more there at the top of the beaches. <laughs> then we're going to have three MMG teams and these are going to be inside the pillboxes or the bunkers and they're just going to be hammering the hell out of the Americans. They're inexperienced which means they start off with a four to hit so at long range they're going to be on fives to hit for most of the battle I imagine until the Americans get close then it'll be fours but it'll be 15 dice a turn coming at them so it should be some pretty nice firepower there then we've got a medium mortar team inexperienced again with a spotter so that'll be hiding up in the uh, emplacement I built for them and they'll have the spotter up on the front line probably on the, in one of the trench lines then we've got a Panzer Shrek team now I had to make these regular because I think if you make if you get an inexperienced Panzer Shrek team, you might as well just um, just assault the tank <laughs> because you've got no chance of hitting it with fire. Um, you know, starting on a four minus one again for for the weapon because the shape charge. So you're starting on a five. That means long range is a six. So they're pretty much never going to hit anything. Um, so that's why I went for regulars with them. I mean, it's a bit more points, but it gives it a chance of actually hitting the tank. So it's just something to go at the top of the cliffs and make the tank and the, the half track have a little bit of something to think about. Um, so they don't just, uh, just charge full speed straight up the ramp, you know, and attack the top of the cliffs. It'll give them something to sort of fear because it's, it's very capable of blowing up a tank, especially at short range, you know. So, yeah, let me know what you think, guys. And then I followed that up with a sniper team just because I wanted something else for the Germans to be able to put a bit of hurt on the Americans there. I went for them as regular. And lastly, I picked a medium artillery, which is inexperienced, and it's got a spotter as well. So this is going to be up at the artillery emplacement I put at the back of the table, and the spotter is going to sit up near the front line somewhere, spotting, bring the fire indirect, and just harass the, the forces. Really, I wanted to get some artillery in there, just to you know keep it fairly accurate. Um, I know they had a lot of artillery on the lines and and such so yeah let me know what you think guys let me know what you think of the forces so these are the Americans this is what they're gonna this is basically the forces I'm short on three on the three landing craft at the moment so if any of you guys know anywhere that makes really nice landing craft really cheap let me know I'm after two LCM threes and one uh, one Higgins so if you know anyone guys or if you are a producer of the crafts and you want to get involved in the project let me know contact me and we'll sort something out that'll be awesome but yeah guys if you know anyone that makes them let me know and I will I'll get over and contact them as soon as I can <laughs> so we got like the regular squad the transport another regular squad another regular squad command flamethrower observer the rangers there's gonna be another squad of rangers just there probably you know same build as that the tank and the other squad of regulars so as you can see it's quite a nice large infantry force it's about 1250 points roughly um 
I give I purposely give the Americans about 250 points more than the Germans because I felt they needed to have more infantry on the table and a larger force because the Germans had the, the defenses which is going to make them a lot harder to kill I think it's it kind of balances it out nicely so on the German side then we're going to have the Ostruppen in the bunker Ostruppen in the trench medium machine gun in the pillbox medium machine gun in the bunker Kreid's Marine up in the trenches with a mortar behind and the spotter there for the mortar is going to be somewhere um, here the here squad regulars uh, Panzer Shrek ready to ambush the tank or the transport which everyone gets closer another medium machine gun team in the, in the pillbox then we're going to have a space here for the another Kreid's Marine squad they're not assembled yet guys I'll get them done as soon as I can then we've got the medium artillery looking really cool there the artillery emplacement in the back we got a sniper team in there, and we've got the command, all the command models. So it'll be, is, they're missing a few riflemen from there, but um, I'll fill those in. Yeah, it's just the medic, the officer, and the observer. So yeah, these are, this is roughly the force. There's a, there's a squad from each side missing at the moment. Um, these aren't the exact models I'm going to use for the Ostruppen. I have got um, a box of early war Germans. And I've got some Russian weapon sprues, so I'm going to be giving them a mixture of Russian and German weapons just to make them look a bit more ragtag, you know, because they were basically forced soldiers from different nations, the Ostruppen, like Russians and French and etc. So I'll be using using the Russian weapon sprues to mix it up a little bit and make them look uh, a bit more ragtag, a bit more sort of, you know. Um, using the dregs of the equipment so guys I hope you enjoyed this look at the update on the board it's been a lot of fun doing it and it will continue to be a lot of fun I'll be making the next videos as soon as I can and getting them up for you I'm Chris from the Tabletop Wargamers thanks for watching the video hope you enjoyed don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel also follow me on Facebook, all the links are down in the description below. Any comments you got guys, any feedback you want to leave, just chuck it in the comments. And I will get back to you, I do respond to all my comments. Thanks for watching guys. Keep gaming guys.